Good evening, gentlemen. I'm just back from a drive in the Cadillac, and it's been a very thrilling movement. Uh, I drove it at about 200 kilometers an hour, and uh, that was a wonderful time. I'm going to talk about something else now. I'm going to talk about the Bombay film industry. And there are certain things which are intriguing, which we're wondering what's happened, why should it happen, what has happened. Let's have a look at it. What does it mean? The first thing is the killing of uh, a member of the Ajit Pawar party, that is the National Con Congress. And this gentleman had left uh, the Congress party and joined the uh, Ajit Pawar. Now why he joined and uh, what happened, we don't know really. And it's a secret which uh, was known only to Mr. Uh, Siddiqui, who has just been sent to the next world. But one thing we bear in mind that uh, his death has sent shock waves in the Bombay film industry. Uh, one of the film stars was a close friend of him, that is Salman Khan, is a state of shock. And uh, he didn't know what's happening because he was a very close friend of this gentleman, uh, Mr. Siddiqui. And now the entire film industry is lamenting, not knowing what's happening, no statements coming, nothing. Why should this man have been sent to the next world? Uh, I don't know myself, honestly, but I can tell you the general trend. Because people have asked me this question, Captain, you've been in observing the Bombay film industry for a long time, and you've been in Bombay, so what's really going on there? So I will just say that it's the mafia and the sleaze money that is dominating this industry. There's no doubt about it. Now, where is this money coming from? The gangsters all around. There's Dawood Ibrahim sitting in Pakistan. He ran away from India in 92 after doing some bomb blasts, killing over a thousand people. And this gentleman is calling the shots there. I, I think we must question Mr. Sharath Pawar, you know, the next chief minister. What's his relationship with this man? I think he, he can tell us. He's a friend, he's an enemy, acquaintance, what he was. Because there is some news I had read about Mr. Shad Pawar, uh, that when there was a plan by a couple of years back, when he was the chief minister of Maharashtra, that David de Brahmin wanted to come back to India and surrender, because he's missing the life of Bombay. So he said he'd come back, spill the beans, stop everything, and all he wanted was a little immunity or a token punishment or something. And Sharad Pawar would have stopped it completely. He said, no, we can't do anything with such a criminal. Though the central government at that time and the Bombay police was inclined to accept the offer. So, one can draw his own conclusions what happened. But this man, Mohammed Siddiqui, who has now been sent to the next world, he appears to be a very simple man, innocuous man, who was in the Congress party for 48 years. He came from Bihar, I think, someplace working here as a menial worker, mechanic or something, then rose up in the hierarchy with the result that he was a man worth crores of rupees. Now you think about this crores of rupees, where did it come Somebody should question it from where. A man who came from Bihar as a pauper suddenly becomes one of the top uh, financiers in the Bombay film industry. There are allegations, and I will say there are allegations only because nothing is proved. Some people tell me that, well, he was a conduit for some of the money to come in from the gangsters in Pakistan and other places, you know, uh, to finance the Phillips. And these gangsters, you know, were insisting, well, as for the heroes concerned, try to star only these uh, top minority community stars. And that's how for the last three decades, Bombay industry is dominated by just the Khans. I mean, it's a bit surprised. In a country which has just got about 14-15% of the minority community has stars dominating the entire uh, spectrum in Bombay. And they are all from the minority communities. And the three Khans at the top of it. They are wonderful men. I don't say there is anything against them. Good actors. I like the acting of Amir Khan. He's a very fine fan. Shahrukh Khan is a good lover boy. And of course uh, we have uh, Salman Khan as a match boy. 
But then what happened is not real. Let's be very frank about it. And one small incident will show you that uh, these people are not really all that overboard. You remember when uh, Mr. Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, came to India, the Indian government arranged for a, a little bit of uh, fun and games and a small exception for him in Bombay. And uh, the film industry was requested to cooperate. Now, lots of people went there. Amitabh Bachchan was there to welcome Mr. Netanyahu. But the three Khans didn't come. Well, they didn't come. They, told me. they didn't want to pay any respect to this man, Mr. Netanyahu. And I think they, uh, you all know what the reason behind it. And uh, that's a sad commentary. Nationalism is a prelude to internationalism. So if you're not a nationalist, how can you go move, move forward? Well, this man, uh, Baba Siddiqui, has uh, unfortunately been involved in this thing. Obviously, I mean, even a layman will tell you that he, what sort of business he was doing that from a man who came here from Bihar, the mechanic man and wrote to this fellow to such heights that he had great friends with the film stars, you know, and he was hobnobbing with them. So he's paid his price, he's gone. And uh, that's some small show that there's a lot of uh, muck in the film industry. You remember the Greeks, uh, gods, stories, fables, there's something called the Augean stable. Now what's the Augean stable? Augean stable means they were the stables of the gods which could not be cleaned. And the industry, unfortunately, the Bombay film industry is in the same boat. It's like an Augean stable and cannot be cleaned unless the central government takes a hand. And the central government so far, uh, right from the time of, uh, I think, Indira Gandhi, toward the end of that period, when the Hindu-Muslim divide started in Bombay and other places, has been going haywire. So, it's a very sad commentary. And uh, there was a time when the stars from the Hindu community dominated the screen and even the topmost star at that time, you know, Dilip Kumar, who was actually a Muslim, chose to keep a Hindu name. Well, he can tell us why. I don't know. So, the gentlemen, the situation has changed a bit. And there means so much of sleaze, so much of crime in the industry and nobody's been able to decipher it. Now, there was a murder of a, a star, an upcoming star, and his name was... Uh, Shushan Singh Rajput and the CBI has investigated and they say it's murder but nobody's been caught and years have passed. So this is a serious question mark on the CBI. What the hell are they doing? I mean, you just go out investigating, say it's a murder and then can't pinpoint anybody? You're supposed to give a closure report or you're supposed to give an internal report and nothing has come. And during the same period, there's another model, you know, I think it's uh, she was a young girl, you know, uh, her name was Disha or something, and uh, she was supposed to have jumped up from the 12th floor or something like that and killed herself. And that was when a party was going on in the flat, and a lot of political leaders were present there. I won't name them here. So obviously, it was Bishi. Later on, uh, the Bombay police uh, went back on the old verdict and said it's a murder. The CBI has investigated, but again, it's drawn a blank. Now, that's something it's very difficult. I can't understand the FBI or the uh, London police and Scotland Yard saying, well, we read the dead end, we don't know anything and uh, uh, and say nothing. I mean, you, even if you don't know anything and you say we don't know anything, we can't pinpoint the murder or something like that. But in India, this is what these people are doing. I have not much of respect for the CBI and I can tell you, gentlemen, I've done four courses in the CBI at the Institute of Criminology in Chandivala Extension in Delhi. And I rubbed shoulders with the topmost officer of the CBI, and I'm really not very impressed with them. I'm being very frank about it. I was wondering what sort of investigation these characters would be doing. They seem to have a very limited horizon, other than one or two. And no wonder, you see, the CBI has not been able to win any cases in the court. There's hard, what is the rate of prosecution? I and mean, what is the rate of uh, culmination of the prosecution? I don't know I the figures, but it's going to be probably very low, you know, maybe less than even 5%. Or maybe they don't want to do it. Or they just, you know, make a hua la bula and end of it. Coming back to the industry, 
there's so many things going on there. The casting couch, well, that's part of the game. I don't say anything wrong with it. Uh, everybody desires a woman, a beautiful woman, and she's come for a role, call a picture, and it's but natural. You want the role, you want the money, well, you follow up. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a mutual consent, but no caution should be involved. No threat, no murder, somebody holding a pistol or a dagger in your head, you know, saying, oh, come on now, take off your clothes. Well, that's not wrong. That's not on. But what's on? If you say, well, I like you, wonderful, I'm going to give you a role. If you feel, we can have a drink together. Wonderful. So that's what it is. And later on, a lot of starlets have been backtracking and saying, this and there's one starlet who came all the way from America to accuse Nana Patekar, you know, a wonderful star. I like his movies and it came to a big zero. And uh, I don't think there's anything much in it, but in the other fields, you know, the black money, the sleeves money which is coming in, that is what's sustaining the industry. And it is coming from dons from Pakistan and other places, or maybe even in America or Canada, I don't know about it. And this is for the CBI to investigate, but I don't know what sort of investigation they're doing so far. There doesn't seem to be anything coming out of the investigations. At least, we didn't have this sort of sleaze money and things coming on when the famous stars, you know, like Raj Kapoor were in charge. Heading the Bombay film industry, there was Rajinder Kumar, Shami Kapoor, so many other good people, even Dilip Kumar, that is Yusuf Ali Khan, he kept a Hindu name, so many, and the actresses were there, Meena Kumari, they were all Muslim. But over a period of time, the Muslim actresses have become very scarce. This is because of a concept in Islam that the Muslim women should be kept behind, you know, and let the men go forward. And uh, now you have a sprinkling of Muslim women, but a preponderance of Muslim men in the film industry who are just sitting there and marrying Hindu wives. <laughs> I mean, that's another great mystery, you know. And uh, some of them, of course, are wonderful people. I think even Salman Khan is a white jab, but then obviously there must be something with him that he's on the hit list also of a gang. No people are accusing that there's something called Vishnoi gang which is doing all this. And I don't know it's a propaganda or what it means because this man, Bushnai, is in uh, Sabramati jail or something for the last eight years. How the hell he could sit inside the jail and keep on doing all these things? I sometime back saw an interview by the DG police, retired DG police of the, uh, from UP and he said that it is not possible if you follow the jail manual, there's no way a man sitting in jail can uh, carry out strikes and hit strikes and murders and all that. So obviously something meets the eye. I do not know if the Indian intelligence agencies are part of it. You don't know. After all, the CIA and the FBI have been known to have killed and bumped off so many of the gangsters. And once they get behind somebody, like the CIA gets behind, they don't leave that man. They go to any country and then kill him. And when the Indians uh, allegedly killed Niger, the Canadians are making a human cry. Uh, it's, I don't understand this because the Niger was a bloody terrorist. And that's digressing from the point. Coming back to the Bombay films, uh, there are some very good stars, but I have not been able to see anybody. And there's one gentleman called Mr. Akshay Khanna, Akshay Kumar. Now, he's supposed to be a nationalist or something like that. I don't think so. he's anything like that. But he's had Canadian citizens for years together. And finally, when the human cry, and the people came to know he's got a Canadian citizenship, he renounced his Canadian citizen, but his family still maintains their Canadian citizenship. So what sort of a man is this man? And then this man goes and this, uh, in the height of uh, arson and writing in Bangladesh against the minority community, he goes and dis uh, dishes out 1.25 crores, you know, to uh, one of the Haji Ali uh, mosques. That's a wonderful place. I've been there. But then I know what the point in giving the money to this mosque, thinking that he's going to get some more films or something. But my information is that it, this money was a conduit for the gangsters, you know, in Karachi or something, so that they could fix up the success of the movie, which was coming lately, were due for release. Because this man had been having a couple of flops for the last three, four years, and he's on his way out. I think he's 55, 56, it's about time that he called it a day. And uh, he's certainly nowhere in 
acting comparison to uh, say Amir Khan or something like that. Uh, irrespective of uh, the fact that there must be sleaze money flowing in and an insistence to starve the Khans, I would say they are good actors and they deserve their place in, in the sun. Well, they somebody pushed them forward and they took the limelight. There were so many other stars who were pushed forward but they didn't come to the limelight, they just vanished away. That's about it. Whereas the Muslim and Hindu is immaterial. So you've got to be acceptable to the public. But who's going to solve the problem of the black money, the sleaze money, which is going around in Bombay Phillips, it's the central government, and they have to do the cleaning act, clean the audience tables. It's a very sad thing, of course, uh, but somebody's got to bell the cat, and there's no better man than Nandan Modi. We don't want another man like the ex Sadar, you know, who was the Prime Minister of India, and this man not only denigrated the uh, job of Prime Minister, but even the Sikh community by his servility and always saying, yes, sir, three bags full. I don't know how she'd be feeling happy about it. Yes, he's going to record all this and he's not going to get a very favorable place in world history. Uh, Narendra Modi, as I told you, is the man who can do it. He's a man without any attachments. He's the yogi, as we say it is. The Param Yogi, we look forward to him for action. The Home Minister, of course, goes by what Modi tells him, and in the sidelines, I think there's one man who's waiting who could really jump into the fray at the right time, and he's uh, Yogi Adityanath. A lot of time for this man. He's a great person, and he's highly qualified, number one. He's got a sharp brain, and he's got so many feats which he has carried out under his own ages. So, gentlemen, the Bombay film industry is in the grip of this money which is coming from abroad and it's got to be stopped and probably money is flowing out there also. I've just shown you how it flows out. Mr. Akshay Kumar giving money to a Darga and the to the Darga will go there and that could be other ways to go also. And then of course uh, Bombay is Bombay. It's a wonderful place. I remember I was once when one of my friends in this having dinner at uh, the resort, the five-star hotel on uh, Marway Beach, Mar Island. And we were just standing in the foyer of the hotel and close the swimming pool. And through that, we saw two boats approaching and two men getting through. And they were, you know, carrying metal boxes, big ones. <laughs> well, you can examine what they were carrying. I don't know. So, Bombay is Bombay. It is the dream of a million people and it is one of the best cities one can live in. And uh, I would say the only place that beats out Bombay is Dubai. It's a wonderful place. My perfect. You've got a lot of fashion to look around too. Well, gentlemen, uh, is a spotlight on Bombay film. I hope you like it. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel and I look forward to shake hands with you more often. Goodbye and God bless and Jai Hind.